Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the last experiment of amphibian physiology that is your effect of load on skeletal muscle contraction. In this video, we'll be talking about the graph of after loaded and free loaded condition or pre loaded condition and we'll see what are the physiological mechanism behind this and what are the viva questions. So let's get started effect of load on muscle contraction. So for that, we should know what are these afterloaded and freeloaded condition. So try to understand in simple way, what is afterloaded condition? Basically, when load acts on muscle after it started the contraction part. So the muscle is resting on some platform. When the muscle, uh, sorry, the load is uh, resting on the platform. When the muscle contracts, the load acts on muscle. Okay before which the the load is not acting on muscle okay uh, so the condition in which the load starts acting on muscle after the contraction has started for example if uh, the this weight lifting in weight lifting the weight is rested on platform when we started contracting the elbow the load act on the elbow okay this is after loaded condition free loaded condition when the condition in which the load acts on muscle before it begins to contract or we can say at rest so if you hang a weight on muscle and before contraction obviously the load is stretching the muscle at rest right so this condition is free loaded condition for example dumbbell workout we have that load in hand we are already stressed uh, with this weight and then we started contracting our elbow. So this condition is free loaded condition. Now let us see first how we will achieve this condition. So in amphibian physiology if you remember this is the uh, setup of the recording of simple muscle twitch. You place the now muscle preparation here on muscle board or myograph board and you uh, attach the stimulating electrode on the nerve. You tie the tendon with the isotonic muscle lever which have a writing point and attach the secondary coil and then primary coil. Okay, circuit attachment, the primary circuit and the secondary circuit. So this is the experimental setup. You don't need to remember this because in Viva even you will not be asked the setup. But just for understanding, you should know this thing. So what we are doing is to achieve the afterloaded condition, we uh, attach this afterloaded screw to this fulcrum. So t t uh, basically this fulcrum is attached with the muscle tendon. So what happens is basically if you zoom this part, this is the this is the fulcrum where the muscle tendon is tied with a thread. Fine. So muscle at rest is tied with a thread. But downward movement of this lever is not allowed. Why? Because of this afterload screw. So whatever weight you will hang here, this weight is not gonna uh, stretch the muscle because the downward movement is not allowed. Fine. So that's why this load is not acting on muscle. But when the muscle contract, it will stretch, it will basically pull this fulcrum toward the muscle. And if so, this isotonic muscle lever will be raised. And if it is raised, then this whatever weight is hanged here, this weight will act on muscle. And this is the condition of after loaded condition. So we'll add on weight here every time and we'll see how the muscle contraction changes. Okay. So you will add every time and repeat the procedure. What happens in free loaded condition then? In free loaded condition, what we want is this weight should be directly at, uh, stretching the muscle. So we have to remove this screw. Whenever this screw is removed, the muscle is directly attached with this uh, weight. Okay. Whenever you will hang any weight that directly stretches the muscle, even at rest so that uh, condition is your free loaded condition and again you record one simple muscle twitch on stationary drum and then again add on 10 gram weight every time and record the simple muscle twitch fine so every time you repeat the procedure and see what is the response so in free loaded condition basically at rest say you recorded one simple muscle twitch 
then you added 10 gram weight so you can see that when you add 10 gram weight the the muscle stretches okay the length of muscle increases because of that there is a shift of this baseline already at rest since the muscle is stretched so the muscle lever move downward because of the uh, because we hang the weight every time so can you see every time you add the weight the baseline shift downward this way you can identify that this downward shift curve is basically free loaded condition you can be asked in your exam that which condition it is so it is free loaded condition okay so and if you see the if you see work done can be calculated work done is equal to force into the actual displacement here the actual displacement is this one so this is the displacement what we got on the drum but the actual displacement of the lever is this this lever came here so this edge small edge is the actual displacement and we have this is a right angle triangle in which this is your capital H and this is capital L and here this triangle this is your small h and this length is small l so this by this is equal to this by this okay so this way we can calculate small h small h can be calculated small l by capital l into h so this way work done can be calculated now let us see what is observation of graph so in after loaded condition you got a graph like this with the addition of every 10 gram weight you got a muscle contraction gradually decreasing okay so this is your observation but if uh, so if we compare this graph on moving drum with after loaded condition and free loaded condition both the condition with moving drum on same paper so you got this that after loaded condition you can see there is decreased force of contraction and reduced phases of phases duration of contraction period and latent period okay uh, sorry uh, relaxation period but latent period if we see the muscle contraction started earlier in free loaded condition so latent period increases in after loaded condition why because this uh, load is acting as resistance so till now you don't concentrate on the physiological mechanism just concentrate what is your observation so the force of contraction gradually reduces and all the phases duration basically reduces in after loaded condition except latent period in free loaded condition if you see there is always a baseline descent and second thing is the amplitude keeps on reducing but if you can see if you can concentrate on first few contraction this amplitude is more than the first one so the amplitude first increases in free loaded condition height of contraction first increases and hence the work done also follow the same and on moving drum free loaded condition the force of contraction is more the duration of phases are more but the latent period duration is less so what that mean to you latent period duration less because there is one component which compose the latent period the time duration of latent period have five causes if you remember one cause is basically series elastic component stretching which occurs in free loaded condition at rest so at rest when you when you when the load acts on muscle this stretches the series elastic component tendon which uh, was part of latent period that's why that part is missing here which reduces the latent period okay so latent period is less in free loaded condition now let us talk about physiological mechanism we are targeting here why free loaded condition is better having more force of contraction okay so since we have talked about that series elastic component that is your tendon is already stressed increases the initial length of the muscle before contraction and we know that according to frank starling law the force of contraction is directly proportional to initial length of muscle and since initial length is high there is high height of contraction but till a limit now what that mean to you 
This is explained by length tension relationship graph where the x axis is muscle length and y axis is tension. So muscle length when it increases when you stretch the muscle till a limit there is increase in tension and then if you stretch it further there is a decrease in tension. What that mean to you? What is the cause for it? So here when you started with the length there is overlapping of the filaments actin and myosin filaments over each other. When you stretches it the actin myosin filament they stretches away from each other so that the number of linkages increases here they overlapped here the number of uh, linkages between them increases till a limit where the there is maximum number of linkages so this length is we call optimal length okay when you stretches further the number of linkage between actin myosin decreases because they are overstressed the actin is going away from the myosin filament that's why there is reduction in force of contraction okay so this physiological mechanism is basically explaining why we have more tension in free loaded condition in after loaded condition basically the series elastic component tendon it stretches after the contraction has begun so the load acts as resistant to muscle contraction it basically prevents that contraction phase and it reduces the uh, contraction duration okay so here every time you add the load that load is acting as resistant to muscle contraction hence the work done also increases till optimal load then it reduces at last we should know some terminologies first resting length the muscle length under natural condition in body in relaxed state so muscle in our body at rest is your resting length initial length is muscle length before every contraction next is equilibrium length equilibrium length is length of relaxed muscle cut free from its bony attachment when you cut the muscle from bony attachment the length achieved is your equilibrium length last is optimal length or optimum length where length under natural condition at rest in body at which the, there is maximum tension so what that mean to you there is a, a range of length which a, a sarcomere can have at rest that is your resting length when within that resting length there is a length where tension is maximal so that is your optimal length or optimum length i hope this point is clear to you i hope now the point of free loaded condition and after loaded condition is clear why we did this experiment why we have high tension in free loaded condition that is applied in gym for muscle training thanks for watching guys please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos bye bye happy learning